In this video, we're going to look at the paradox of Achilles and the tortoise. This was a paradox first put forward by the ancient Greek philosopher Zeno, and Zeno used this in order to show that motion as we understand it is actually impossible. However, we're going to be able to use some simple mathematics which wasn't available in Zeno's day in order to actually solve this. So firstly, the paradox, right? It goes like this. One day, Achilles, who is the fastest man in Greece, decides to have a foot race against a very slow tortoise. And Achilles says to the tortoise, look, I want to race you, and I want this to be a race over 100 metres, but I also want it to be fairly close. So I want to give you a head start. What head start are you going to need in order to make this a close race? And the tortoise thinks for a second, and he says, Achilles, I just need a one metre head start. And Achilles says, well, that's clearly ridiculous. I'm much, much faster than you. A one metre head start, I'll overtake you in no time at all. And the tortoise says, not so, Achilles, because if I start one metre ahead of you, then by the time you've caught up to where I initially started, I will have travelled a further distance. And then by the time you catch up to where I was at that point, I will again have travelled a further distance. And you see, Achilles, that every time you catch up to where I was, I would continue to have moved even just an infinitesimal distance for further forward than you, and in fact you will never be able to overtake me, even with such a small head start. And Achilles is dumbfounded by this, but he can't think of a way to disprove the tortoise's point. So that's the paradox, and if you want to have a go at it yourself, now's the time to pause the video because I'm just about to dive in to how we can tackle this mathematically. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to translate this problem from English into maths. So, how are we going to do that? Well, just like the tortoise said, um, Achilles, over here, starts one metre ahead of our tortoise, over here. And then, by the time Achilles has reached this point, where the tortoise started, the tortoise will have moved forward again. And to keep the math simple here, I'm going to say that Achilles travels three times faster than the tortoise, but we can use any number we want, within reason. Um, so, by the time Achilles has travelled this one metre to where the tortoise started, the tortoise has moved forward again, and the tortoise is travelling at a third of the speed of Achilles, so the tortoise will have travelled one third of a metre in that time. And then, by the time Achilles catches up to where the tortoise was at this point in time, the tortoise will again have moved forward, so Achilles would have travelled one third of a metre in that time, and the tortoise, travelling at a third of the speed, will have travelled one third of one third of a metre, which is equal to one ninth. And this is how the race is going to progress from here. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to add up this infinite series of terms here, because that's the tortoise's argument, right? He's saying that whenever you catch up with me, I'll have moved forward a little bit, and this will happen infinitely, and you'll never overtake me. So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to call the sum of all the distances the tortoise travels s. Now what s is equal to is, well, he starts one metre ahead, so the first term is one, the second term is a third, the next term is a ninth, and then by the same logic, we can see that each term in this series is going to get smaller by a factor of 1 over 3. So the next term is going to be 1 over 27, and so on. And we have an infinite sum. So now the natural question is, what does this sum equal? So to tackle that, the first thing we need to do is we're going to take out a factor of a third. So what are we left with? Well... The first term in the series is 1, but we've taken out a factor of a third, so that becomes 3. The second term in the series is a third, we've taken out a factor of a third, so that's just 1. The third term in the series is a ninth, but we've taken out a factor of a third, so what are we left with? We're left with a third. And then a ninth, and then 1 over 27, and so on. Now we make an observation here, right? And we say that if we ignore this bit here, if we ignore the factor of a third and the three, then what we're left with, one plus a third plus a ninth plus a 27, is exactly the sum we started with. So this here is equal to, we're gonna keep this factor of a third, we've gotta keep the first three, 
but then everything here is just s. And now we have an equation we can solve, right? We have s is equal to a third of 3 plus s. And let's solve that. So it's So this is a third of 3 plus s. I'm going to times both sides by 3, and then I'm going to minus this s from this side. So we end up with 2s is equal to 3, or s is equal to 3 over 2, or 1.5 meters. And that's the solution of this, right? Because what we haven't done is we haven't refuted the Tortoise's claim that there's an infinite number of steps in which he is ahead of Achilles, because he is. That logic is totally sound and there's nothing we can do about that. But the really surprising thing is the nature of that infinity, right? Because although there's an infinite number of steps, those infinite number of steps are combined in a finite distance. In 1.5 metres, Achilles is going to overtake the tortoise. But it's going to take him an infinite number of steps in order to do that. But these infinite number of steps are happening in a finite distance, and they're happening, crucially also, in a finite time. Because this whole argument we've used, instead of doing the distance the tortoise travels, we could have done the time. So the time it takes for Achilles to catch up to where the tortoise initially was. And then the time it takes Achilles to catch up to where the tortoise was in that extra little bit of race. And that's the surprising thing. What this paradox demonstrates is that you can have infinities, but you can have finite infinities. You can have infinities which are bounded. And that's what the Greeks didn't have in their time. They didn't have a mathematical way of formalizing these kind of infinities. And that's why they had all these different paradoxes, of which Zeno's is probably the most famous, which demonstrated, according to them, that motion was impossible.